Hi everyone, Dr. Hill with you. Today I'm excited we're going to talk a little bit about a new essential oil that's created a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm, Capaiba essential oil. Now personally, I also really love this essential oil because of all the broad effects that it has on several different systems within the body. So let's start there. Anytime, as you know, that we have an effect that comes from an essential oil, it's because of its chemistry. But in this case, it's also because of how it works with the body. And so let's talk a little bit about how Copaiba does that and what makes it very unique among other essential oils. So let's begin there. Let's talk about the endocannabinoid system. Now this is a system in the body that over recent months and even the last few years has really got lots more acclaim than what it's had in the past. And part of the reason is because it's so influential within the body. A lot of things that you and I do on a daily basis are affected through the endocannabinoid system. And it's a pretty easy system to understand. It's not very difficult. In fact, we can break it down into two primary categories. One is influence that we have within the central nervous system. Giving an example of how some of that might work, the endocannabinoid system working through your central nervous system and CB1 receptors, which is how that system is influenced specifically within the central nervous system, has some, some control over appetite, whether or not you're nauseated, cognitive functioning like memory, for example, reward, intraocular pe pressure, even discomfort. There's a number of different things that are regulated through the central nervous system all of which are affected directly through the endocannabinoid system. Now this is interesting if you think about it, and this is one of the primary reasons why there's so much enthusiasm and a lot of discussion about endocannabinoids, most of which we're all very familiar with. One of the reasons why I like our new essential oil, Capaiba, is because its influence into that system is not as direct as it is with some other cannabinoids. Now it'll become really clear why I think that's so important that we recognize that. The CB2 system, or the system that functions outside of the central nervous system, is a little bit different. It's focused in primarily on two critical roles that are important to function properly within the body. One is your whole endocrine system. This is the glandular system of your body. This is the chemical responses of your body. And so you can see why it's important to have good, consistent, and proper influence that way. And then the one that many of us are constantly concerned with is our body's immune capability. And we can influence the ability of the body to have good, strong immune responses by working through the endocannabinoid system with the CB2 receptors. So we have those two categories, CB1 receptor, which is largely focused on the central nervous system, and CB2 receptors, which is primarily focused outside of the central nervous system. Now there's a lot of talk about cannabinoids. What is a cannabinoid? A cannabinoid is something that works directly through the endocannabinoid system. Typically people like to define that by the type of plant that it comes from. But that's not really necessarily a complete nor a proper definition. A cannabinoid is really defined by its ability to influence either CB1, CB2, or both receptors. One of the reasons why I like Capaiba, and we've introduced this into the marketplace, is because of its ability to influence the receptors associated with the endocannabinoid system. So let's talk about those two receptors very specifically. And let's talk about it in the context of endocannabinoids as separate structures that function within that process. And by structures, what I really mean is chemistry. So there's some that you're going to be very familiar with, and I've highlighted these in the past. And so let me give you some brief explanation as to why I think each one has its value and what it primarily would do within the body. The first one is CBD. Cannabidiol. Now cannabidiol is one that you've probably heard a lot about because of cannabis oil. It's interesting when we look at chemistry associated with essential oils, we are always concerned with their value being an issue of concentration and delivery. In other words, something might be very, very effective, but if I don't have a high enough concentration, I can't reach a threshold of activity that I'm looking for. One of the challenges that I've noticed with cannabis essential oil, for example, is that the amount of cannabidiol that's present sometimes is significantly lower than what you or I would think of as being effective in terms of the amount of chemistry. 
But if we actually look at what the medical or the physiological descriptor of what a cannabinoid is, it's any chemistry that can influence the appropriate receptor. So in this case, CB1 or CB2 receptors. I like defining it that way because not only is it physiologically and functionally correct, but it also gives us the ability to understand more effectively the type of influence that it will have. So, for example, there are some that you might be familiar with. Cannabidiol, CBD, that's one that most people are familiar with. Another one that people are very familiar with is tetrahydrocannabidiol, THC. That's one that has heavy influence, for example, into CB1 receptors. The type of influence that we were looking for in doTERRA was a little bit different from that. We wanted to isolate very specifically how we could have good broad-spectrum activity through the endocannabinoid system without any of the unwanted outcomes that are sometimes associated with other types of cannabinoids. For that reason, we've introduced Kapiba essential oil. Kapiba is rich in a very specific cannabinoid. Now remember, we've defined cannabinoids in the correct sense to mean anything that influences the endocannabinoid system. Now one of the reasons why I personally like Kapiba is because we don't have some of the other unwanted effects that can come from other cannabinoids, and yet we have very powerful influence specifically through CB2 receptors. So we get this broad spectrum of activity. Now if we talk about cannabinoids in essential oils, this is not something new. In fact, there's several essential oils that you've already had access to that have some of this cannabinoid, the same that we see in Kapiba essential oil, already present, beta cara -ophylline. And the oils that we've seen that have cannabinoids in the past are oils like black pepper, melissa, langalang, clove, even oregano has a smaller amount, but some of the cannabinoids that are present. Kapiba, however, is a little bit different than those other essential oils, and mainly because of the high level or concentration of the cannabinoid beta carophylline that we see in Kapiva essential oil. This means that we have very powerful and very focused benefits. This means that if the value of an essential oil is based not just only around its purity, but the efficacy also comes from the potency of that, giving the right delivery in the right concentration, this means then that Kapiva fits that category better than any other essential oil that I'm personally aware of because it has high concentrations and we can deliver it in the right methodology. I think a lot of times we feel like because we may be dealing with complicated issues or because we're dealing with body systems that we don't have full understanding of, that somehow it must be really difficult and I have to have some challenging ways that I can use this essential oil or it won't be effective. Keep in mind that whether it's this oil or any of the essential oils that you will use, sometimes the most beneficial effects come from the simplest and easiest ways to use them. There's many other ways that we can use Kapiva. One of my favorite ways has been that many times we're involved in activities or we have circumstances that cause discomfort to be a natural part of the process. Applying Kapiva targeted right into those areas is an effective way to help soothe and help the body to overcome those challenges. It's far-reaching the things that we can do with Kapiva. Another good example on how to use Kapiva is using Kapiva for the skin itself, applying again directly topically over the affected area, whether it's some type of an abrasion that's occurred or we have some type of a rash or an irritation that's developed. It supports the body's natural ability to overcome those issues quickly and fully. Remember, that's the advantage we have within the endocannabinoid system, is it's supporting the body in its natural processes, and we're working directly through that system. I don't know of the limitations that exist with Kapiva, because when I think about the endocrine system and when I think about the immune system of the body, those are two critical areas that we need balance and that we need full functioning. The big challenge that we have is not looking at isolated circumstances with any essential oil. And I think Kapiva fits into that category as well. We all can easily think of how I might use Kapiva in an episodic fashion. The big challenge is how do we use Kapiva on a daily basis? How do I use Kapiva so that I have sustained support through those systems that we've talked about?
for this reason, I think we need to develop daily routines. One of the things that I've begun doing in my own use of Kapiva is I give myself aromatic exposure to that with consistency. The other thing that I've begun doing is I've begun using Kapiva in an internal model. I like doing that because of the access that I get when I use essential oils internally, but I feel like I get sustained support from using that essential oil. So just to review quickly, using Kapiva aromatically becomes really powerful because we can have some constancy of the essential oil. Use Kapiva topically for very targeted application. And then lastly, use it internally, which I do every single day, in a way that you can have whole body influence in this broader balancing aspect of the value that comes from influencing the endocannabinoid system. I really believe that over time we're going to find that Kapiva is an essential oil that everyone will want to use every single day and will become a critical part of the essential oils that they use routinely. I know that's how it's been for me and I'm excited for what we'll yet discover about Kapiva but could not be more grateful for the influence that this oil is already having and the impact to so many. My challenge to you is that you find effective ways that you can use this essential oil.